Hey everybody, this is Lou from Lou Paints and I'm that miniature painting coach and we're going to redo the way we paint our miniatures because uh, I've been setting up these videos for quite a while now and I would like to get a YouTube video actually published public so uh, people can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, before this, it was just kind of uh, a select few people who uh, have been giving me constructive criticism uh, however, I do think that it's uh, finally time for me to open up that space. So, first off, this will be the uh, uh, the reference that we have. This is uh, the Don Glare Invoker, and it's a Core Wizard. This is a 2010 Wizards of the Coast Magic the Gathering card, a white card, of course. And, uh, I, you know, I used to be a pretty heavy Magic the Gathering fan, and I wouldn't be able to remember anything <laughs> if anybody asked me about Magic the Gathering nowadays because I'm just so out of it however we will be using this as our uh, reference to kind of review over and take inspiration from because we are going to paint uh, this uh, I believe it's a Betronian Sorceress or a Betronian Maiden so this is uh, from one of the earlier models from Games Workshop and it is metal so I've already done some um, base uh, coloring on this using mostly primary colors so let's just adjust that focus real quick and go ahead and decide what paints we're going to put our plat on our uh, platelet over here and I'll probably introduce myself a little bit later in the video because I don't think anybody kind of knows uh, what I do these are the kind of paints that I use so let's just kind of move away our white palette a little bit so this is whoops um, magenta from the golden line we have uh, turquoise from golden line so this will be my cyan and my magenta of my primaries and this will be our, our yellow so um, I come from an art background and so I'm pretty comfortable with using heavy body acrylics which is what these uh, toothpaste uh, <laughs> tubes of paints are uh, and so I'm I love the saturation on these um, these tubes and the paints that come out of them so it's uh even though i do end up mixing them the colors are still pretty bright you can see this yellow is just like brimming on the camera so i'm gonna <laughs> remove that before it maybe blinds somebody and we are also going to use uh, uh winston newton's uh, uh galleria pale terracotta which is um one of their skin colors and i really like this skin color but uh, we will only be using it very sparingly because I dislike having a skin color that's just kind of base skin color and we'll also be using uh, this uh, golden line of teal which is um, it's it's just really saturated and it's hard to kind of mix out that form of a teal and we'll use that white from uh, Vallejo which is a game color and uh, me as well for the darker shades we'll just use a simple uh, black pilot ink it's just ink that's made in Japan and you can get it in any stationery sh store for cheap now I'm not quite sure if it's um, something you guys can get from where you're from but um, this is what I have available at uh, where I live which is Malaysia right? I live in uh, Southeast Asia so this is uh, again what we're painting and let's just go ahead and place the things that we need on our, uh, our palette so first we will kind of put on these uh, that white and I will probably add in some medium later on so we're just gonna put just a little bit of white at the top uh, and I'm still deciding on where to put certain colors quite fully decided yet so this will be our magenta we're just gonna kind of whoops there's a dry coat over there let's just take some tissue just kind of remove that from the edge a little bit yeah and then Let's just kind of pinch it onto our uh, palette over here. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. More than enough. That's a lot more than enough. Um, and then we will take the turquoise. And I will be mixing quite a bit of uh, something around along the lines of blue and uh, purple. So we will be using quite a bit of this. So let's just go ahead and ease it on our uh, palette over here and that will actually mix up most of our colors 
Um, there is a mosquito in my room again. So I'm just going to spray some mosquito pellet. So if you're living anywhere in the tropical areas, there is this a lemongrass uh, spray that uh, you can get in some stores. I know it's not paint, but I do actually have to use it because in my country, like we have mosquitoes all year round. And I'm not quite sure if you guys can hear that in the background, but that's the uh, Muslim prayer that's uh, going on right now. So I'm just going to tone down my voice, show a little respect. And kind of put the rest of my paints down. You see, I don't have my teal yet. Pop that open. It's getting a little bit of paint on my fingers, so let's just go ahead and put that teal over here. There we go. And is that enough? I'm not sure. So let's just go ahead and take uh, my uh, dead end brush. I think this is some old Fable Castell brush. So I don't even know what the. Uh, what it says anymore, I'm just gonna douse it on there. Clean that brush, and then the put on my tray. Okay, so there we go, we have most of our paints, including our white, which we'll move that away, and we'll keep our uh, inks in view over here. All right, so just kind of place that around here. So now, why am I doing this thing where I'm having this uh, this other camera over here to the, to the side so you guys can see? And that's because I've realized that um, it's important to this, to show how hand control is while painting the miniature and there's no real idea in how depth is. So as I am kind of moving this miniature over here in front of the camera which I'm painting through, I'm just kind of looking through here in this camera, uh, you guys will be able to see how I uh, actually paint uh, my miniatures. So let's just kind of grab that focus real quick. Whoops. Is that better? Yes, it is. So here we go. Um, oh wait, I have forgotten something. Let's just bring our pellet back here. Goes to show that I'm not used to this process just yet. We will take our uh, pale terracotta, this thing. Actually, I will need the cloth to open this because this, this paint is tough. And it's old too. Like I forgot, I have this same old um, tube of skin paint pale terracotta for at least since I don't have the receipt or the price label anymore but I be, do believe I bought it at around 2009 so it's ancient um, and we'll place this right there next to the yellow and that will be our skin color that's actually way more than what we need okay so finally since we're we don't need those colors anymore we won't need, do we need to mix them? No, we won't. And I'll show you guys why uh, later. Okay, so here's our ink, which we will use in a bit. So I'll just kind of loose that cap a little bit. Place that to the side. And uh, here's the magic sauce that I use. I use a slow dry medium, which is, it's glossy. Um, can you... It's placed on the miniature, you can see that thing is all white. So, just kind of put it here. I believe it's by Liquitex. Let me just take the bottle real quick so you guys can take a look at it. So this is uh, the Liquitex So Dry Blending Medium. It's uh, it's retarder. So, kind of give you an I guys an idea of what it actually is. It's, um, uh, it's a uh, medium. And if you don't know what medium is, it's basically what all paints, color pigments are contained in. So even this uh, this golden uh, artist color here, this magenta, it does have some uh, medium inside of it. And what medium does is that it just kind of is a plastic that holds all the colors in. And this is what medium looks like when it does not have any paints. Uh, it does not have any color pigments inside of it so there's no color in this that's not white it's transparent when you place it on the model and so all it does is uh it's just the the paint without any color <laughs> like it's completely transparent um and let me just grab my brushes so the brushes that i'll be using is from the uh the princeton uh line so i have a mini detailer over here it's not actually mini it's pretty big and I do love using uh, these sorts of uh, brushes for my use. 
So I have a uh, mini detailer over here, and I do believe that this is a whoops. Uh, well, how how are these labels kind of label? They say like three o five o m, and then the three o five o v g. So you can see um, one is a monogram and one is a dagger. Now I don't have any uh, affiliation with these brushes, nor do I. I uh, would recommend anybody to get these brushes specifically. It's just that these are what uh, I use and so I don't come across the questions of uh, which brushes do I uh, use to paint. So um, I do have one more detailer over here which is the Round uh, 3050R um, which is a 20 to 0 ratio brush which is it's just really tiny and uh, perhaps a bit bigger than some of the brushes that you guys, some of you guys might be using. And we will still need to place, uh, have a, a palette knife over here, kind of place our medium, take a bit there and just kind of plop it uh, right on the middle here. And then we'll kind of take the rest and we'll kind of douse it in our, in our water. And what this does is that because there's retarder medium inside of it, uh, not medium, but retarder chemicals inside of it, it will cause the paints which I will clean up in my container later to not uh, to to not dry up at the size of the container. Okay, so let's just put this away, clean up my palette knife. And so that's already um, what 12 minutes in the video just to set everything up. But setting everything up is the most important phase, uh, I do believe, in order to get uh, miniatures done right. And do I need to mix anything here? No, I don't. So I'll kind of show you guys why. I'll be using this brush. And then we will just kind of zoom in this way. So you guys can kind of see what, what I'm doing here. Okay? So let's make sure this camera can actually see where my uh, miniature is. So it's not... Uh, it's not of the the uh, perspective, so I will take some paints. Let's just take some medium, slow dry medium here. Douse it on the palette. Take a bit more. Douse it on the palette. And uh, how I'm getting it is this kind of looks like this. It's just really wet, and I am going to just add a little bit more water to my brush, and I'm going to douse it all over. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I need to make sure that um, this miniature uh, is easy to blend on uh, later. So this is how I emulate the usage of oil paints onto miniatures. Um, it's um, what some people would call wet blending, except that I don't know what if it's uh, called wet blending for sure, because I think the way most miniature painters kind of do it is that uh, when I see videos is they just kind of put a little bit on one side and they continuously put paints and then mix through it I don't do that I basically slop it all over the uh, my canvas which is the miniature and then I put my paints on it to kind of simulate a good glow and so this is how I do uh, uh, I believe it's called object source lighting. Now I have to make it clear for everybody that I am pretty new to these terminologies because um, while I have had been painting anything from sculptures, uh, some porcelain, um, mostly transformers uh, and all other sorts of um, uh, miniatures back in 2013 uh, when I mean, back in 2008 to 2013. So for those five years, I actually painted uh, quite a bit of uh, the this, this stuff I just said. But I took a long break because life kind of demanded it throughout the years. And so I only really begun painting miniatures again at about April this year. So most of the time, um, I, I still did art as a means of uh, practice. But it's not really the same as... Uh, it's kind of honing your skill throughout the years, so uh, I am going to um, work on that skill that I have been missing through the years, or rather I didn't earn. Um, so that's what I'll be doing. And I won't be doing any basing on this model just yet. And notice how the 
um, colors and the, uh, the miniature is not the same as the reference that I kind of put out and that's on purpose because I am not interested in copying the colors for the miniature what I'm more interested in is in order to gain the effect of that glow which mm, if we see on this card here there's a glow effect that's going on uh, one space one area which is on the top right and we kind of have it casted on the rest of a cloth so I don't want to have that effect uh, same kind of effect onto this uh, miniature which I, I have for the most part however um, I do want to keep her colors in a way that's uh, that I feel just kind of stands out to my own preferences which is uh, I haven't really quite decided yet. I don't really have a name. So right now, I'm just putting on the turquoise. Um, and I don't know if I want her hair to be really blonde or to be a brunette. I've just kind of laid down the uh, base um, colors, which is it behaves as a uh, primer of sorts for the undercoat. And so those colors will determine the, uh, the saturation and the uh, color temperature of how my miniature is going to the environment. So let's see what we can do here. All right, so we are just kind of working. Oops, gotta make sure I don't uh, end up having a uh, blurred out video. So I'm gonna make sure to keep that in, in a focus. Just just keep doing this some more. Um, that needs a little bit of um, skin color. So. And this is, I think, gonna might surprise some of you guys because I do believe that most of the things that I do are not um, common in miniature painting, at least not from the videos that I've seen. So I just took skin color and I just kind of wet blended it on the spot because I don't want it to be too saturated, right? So kind of, I don't know if you guys can see here. Let's zoom out for a little bit, right? So I have this skin color right here. So all I'm doing is I'm taking this uh, skin color and adding it with the turquoise that I have and just kind of going it through the, uh, the parts of the miniature where I feel it should have this uh, small little glow and a bit uh, kind of dimmed off so let's just kind of do that uh, with each part that we have over here now I already have the undercoat so I do know what my miniature is for the most part is going to be like so I'm going to dim off that yellow because that's just not how uh, stuff yellow glows in real life so I'm just going to make sure I put this here to fade that yellow off I'm going to take more skin color I'm just going to dab it on her dress over here over here so we're going to do a little bit more right so um, I guess while painting, uh, I should just kind of talk a little bit my, about myself while I'm also practicing keeping the camera zoomed at the right depth. So I do apologize for um, any inconveniences I, I've caused uh, from um, having this uh, video kind of not be all that in focus because it's still, still new to me uh, and it's not in practice yet. Now, okay, so what about myself what I like to talk about so I'm Malaysian and I'm actually Chinese uh, I'm of the Hokkien ethnicity and so um, how did I discover miniature painting well I um, grew up with uh, books from Disney uh, and I grew up with a lot of stuff that was uh, I think a little bit more Western than uh, what my local friends kind of exposed to and so I, I for the most part I really love um, you know like um, Cinderella Beauty and the Beast stuff like that but beyond that um, I think I've pretty much grown into uh, even dystopia fancy or uh, stuff to do with um, lots of decrepit or corruption so nowadays I find myself painting the Slanesh miniatures and uh, I found it really a fun way to, in order to improve at my uh, painting skin, right? So let me just kind of add in a little bit more medium to certain parts of this 
like so because I do want that uh, saturated magenta to kind of come in really softly and then kind of go off and hopefully we will cover up her face in a little bit um, let me see here also I will probably make these videos about 30 minutes long like not too long so and I'll spread them out into uh, episodes so that people can just kind of watch them in parts in their free time because I don't appreciate videos that are ridiculously long unless we have like people two people talking or it's an interview okay so let's just go ahead and add this make it less and less desaturated each time we kind of put on our paints right so I may add a little bit of texture at those uh, parts on her um, her color but not quite yet not quite yet so let's just kind of put it over here um so yeah i mean i think i really only started painting miniatures uh when my buddy who uh, also paints uh transformers and he actually paints uh, uh other stuff he, he doesn't do it anymore but this was back in 2008 uh i believe yes yes so i met him in 2008 and his name is darren lee and he uh introduced me to a friend uh, named rong tao and we initially found some dust warfare miniatures and at the time i was a college student and so i couldn't afford um uh, buying uh, stuff from 40k or from warhammer fantasy which i really wanted to at the time um but when in, I mean, in in Asia, like the in Malaysian, it takes four Malaysian ringgits to make one US dollar, and so things that are imported for uh, miniatures are pretty ex pretty damn expensive in my country. So, um, kind of have to wait till I got a little older to be able to do anything about it. Now, uh, I still did went ahead and save up money and to uh, paint because I was in an art college at the time and I, I just really wanted to paint miniatures so I we started from Dust of Warfare and slowly I moved on into uh, more of a fantasy but soon I realized that it was extremely difficult to cope up with the uh, the much more older people at the time who were painting and playing the game because it's just really difficult to afford um, this hobby or rather, for me right now, it's not really a hobby anymore. It's more like a uh, a way I use to improve myself while I um, also work on this uh, Paint Better Miniatures course on the side, which is uh, a course for some students, which is kind of uh, really neat. Um, like, they really want to improve their miniature painting. And so uh, they seek me out because I'm somebody with an art background. Uh, after I gave off my uh, survey for people who had wanted a uh, trial at it because it's a program that I'm still trying out and they're right now still in the middle of that program so I'm still curious about how it will work out for everybody now we just kind of have that uh, dumbed down a little bit so let's just go ahead and work on some of those much more minute color changes so I will kind of take my brush over here, just kind of add that magenta tone underneath, like so, because we want to bring back that saturation. And later we will, um, we will add some more fine tones to this. Right now we just want to make sure we get that cut those color changes at the bottom there, like so. And we also want to get a little bit of magenta at the sides here. Right. Hey, I have my cat like sleeping underneath at my feet. This is just kind of saying hello right now. Mm -hmm. Just kind of put this down here. Like this. Have that, those nice small little changes in color. And then, um, hmm. I'm deciding if I want to start doing that base for that uh, true metallic metal just yet. Um, because 
I should really darken those lines. Yeah, I think I'll do that now. So we just kind of do that now and we'll wrap up this episode. Uh, and so for in, ter in terms of production wise, I'm going to start recording the next episode immediately because I know what I want to paint and I just have the convenient time right now to do so because uh, it's just convenient at home. So I'm going to sneak these blacks on. Like this. Just kind of dust them on. Mmm. Oops. Should be placing this here. So we just kind of take a bit more ink. And I will add these small little shadows for that. So trying to decide how desaturated some parts of the model should be. Because uh this model is going to be vibrant at the darks. Um, that's how I would like it, and a little bit more desaturated towards the light. There we go. We've kind of snuck on that black over there. And then we will also be adding on a little black towards this area because we do want to desaturate. Uh, the sides of these, uh, whatever this is, like a cloth thing? Meow. Yeah. Mm. I do have to keep my cat with me and I do apologize if uh, it does get annoying for whoever watches because uh, sh she just did surgery and I need to keep an eye on my cat. Um, so I do thank you guys for putting up with my cat if you have decided to continue watching the video. Let's just go ahead and add a little bit of annotations on this side because that side is going to be a lot more darker. Right? Mm. Mm. There we go. This side as well. And so we'll put undercoating the metal parts with black because I'm going to build it up slowly so the shine is going to be contrasted with the black from underneath. Mm. I'm going to add a little bit more black here because it's coming towards down the feet. Okay. How's my clock doing? My clock's doing great. Only at 27 minutes, so we'll keep going. We already spent most of today setting up. Uh, this episode, I mean. And we'll just keep going. Small little inches. And especially to do with the uh, back area here because there's some keys over here. So we do that too. And you kind of see I've already done the uh, undercoat for that hair. Again, not sure if she's brunette or blonde yet. But um, I've already done the atmospheric uh, colors on this miniature. Using the same primaries which uh, I showed you guys. So yeah, this was all with just the turquoise, the magenta and the uh, the yellow. And there's definitely a lot of magenta on this piece, I do admit. Because as the time goes on, we'll be using less and less magenta. So let's just make sure we get all of the crevices for this in black. And it's only again as an undercoat because nothing in real life is actually black. Oops. Can we see the miniature? Yes, we can. So let's just go ahead and... Oops. There we go. Okay, now what have we done so far in uh, today's session? Let's just double check. Have a good look. So we have um, kind of set our paint palette up with my uh, oops. Let's just uh, get the zoom off real quick. Okay, we've already done our wet palette. We have our teal, our yellow, our Pale terracotta, which is our skin, that uh, that white magenta turquoise, and we have some slow dry medium. And I will still need to continue working on this model, uh, except that you guys will kind of see it as in the form of a next episode. And so I'll just keep kind of working and working on as we go along. Right. So in the meantime, you guys take care. <laughs>